Hi, and welcome to this web tutorial of iMovie 10.1.8. Let's get started. I've went ahead and made a folder on my desktop, which includes all of my video and audio that I will be using. And so I'm just going to go ahead and open up iMovie. Okay, so this is the first window you see when you open iMovie. Generally, these two projects wouldn't be here. These are personal projects. So the way you're always going to start is by either double clicking into a pre-existing project or by cl clicking the Create New button. So if I click the Create New button, you see I get two options, Movie and Trailer. Now, 99% of the time, you're going to want to use Movie. That allows you to create and edit however you want to. Trailer. Trailer gives you an option to create just that, a movie trailer. So I can pick any category here. I'm going to just go ahead and pick action and click create. And it gives me a storyboard and timeline and shot list for uh, making a movie trailer. So it gives you a close up, an action shot, action shot, action shot, action shot, landscape, two people. Right, and you just plug and play, dropping clips in uh, as they go. And so that is an interesting feature, but like I said, I'm just gonna come back here. Um, okay, I can name that. I can delete a file by just coming, or a project, by coming right here to these little three dots, and I'm just going to go ahead and delete that project. So I'm gonna click Create New again, and like I said, 99% of the time, you're gonna wanna use Movie. So we're gonna go ahead and click that. Okay. So iMovie, like its sister applications, iTunes and GarageBand, is a one-window application. And within this one window, we have three smaller windows. We have our timeline down below. We have our media window, as well as some other options in the upper left. And we have a preview window, as well as some editing options in the upper right. So first things first, we need to import our media into our project. You can do that a couple of ways. I can go ahead and click on this arrow here for import media. I can also click on this down arrow at any time. I can also come into file and import media. So I'm just going to go ahead and give that a click. Okay, and now I can navigate to wherever my media is held. So I know it's on my desktop and it's under raw video. And so I'm just going to go ahead and shift select this and click import selected. Okay, great. So this is some stock footage, royalty-free footage uh, and audio that I pulled off of the internet. And we're gonna use it to make a short, interesting project today. So there's a few ways we can get our media from our media window into our timeline so we can start editing. First of all, I can simply click and I can drag clips down into my timeline just like this. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out zoom out there using that key and select it and just use my delete or backspace button to get rid of those. I can come back up and I can click on one of these clips and simply click the plus button as well. And this will drop it right into my timeline that way. Delete these again. A uh, third option is we can still use this plus sign, but we can trim uh, beforehand. So say I wanted this, this clip, which is 50 seconds. I can make it shorter. I can cut in to just about there if I only wanted this section. If I scroll over, you notice I get a little preview. And then I can go ahead and click the plus button and it's only going to bring in that section that I wanted. So you can come through and pre-cut your clips one by one and then bring them in one by one uh, after that. I'm just gonna go ahead and reverse all of this. Okay, so I'm just going to drag and drop some clips down. And you notice I have a few clips here. I have a green ink and blue ink. I have a sky, a landscape, and a cat video. I have this video, but I'm going to use it for the audio and not actually the video. So we'll get to that later. Okay, so I want to firstly, I'm going to go ahead and drop this green ink video down. And this landscape, since it's also green. I can use this slider right here to zoom in and out of my project. So I'm gonna zoom out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go with this blue ink and this sky video. 
and then this cat video. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom back in a little bit here. So the first thing I notice is that my clips are way too long, uh, averaging about a minute or two a piece, which is just pretty long for a single clip. So we're gonna come in and trim those up. So in this particular video, I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit more. Uh, in this particular video, we have ink being shot upwards. So I definitely want the tail end of this clip. I think I want from about there. So the way we can cut, we don't actually have a razor tool in iMovie, but I can click anywhere and you notice this line follows where I click. And so I can come in and just right click right on that line, right on the clip and say split clip. So now I have these two sections of the clip and I can just go ahead and select this first section, which I didn't want. I'm gonna use backspace or delete. And now I'm left with only this section here. So I'm going to go ahead and do similar things for the rest of these clips. This is a pretty static shot. So I'm going to reduce it by about a third, two thirds. Get rid of that. Okay. I think I also want the tail end of this here. So I'm going to come in just about here. I'm going to split the clip again, get rid of this first part. Sky video, also pretty static. I can really cut this wherever I want, so I'm going to choose right about there. Okay, I'm going to leave the cat video be for just a minute. So now we have a rough timeline of different clips. We've shortened them and we've dropped them in our timeline in a certain order. Now to move the order or to move clips around, I can just click and drag and place this anywhere else in between any other clips. I can also click and drag and place a video above another clip and we will get to what that means later. But if you need to reorganize after, you don't have to import everything in order, you can drop everything in and then you can sort of freely drag and drop those clips back around. I'm just gonna put this back in order. Okay. So we have our clips cut, but we have no transitions. So this is a good time to talk about the options we have up here in the upper left. So right now we've been on My Media, which lets us access the media that we imported into the project. I'm going to go ahead and come over to Transitions. And here we have a bunch of transitions provided by iMovie. The most common that I use or that you might use would be Cross Dissolve or Fade to Black. We also have a lot of other options, Cross Blur, Fade to White, Spin In, Spin Out. After you get after uh, Spin In, they, they become a little bit cheesy, sort of like PowerPoint uh, transitions with the page peel left and right. But I use cross dissolve and fade to black a lot. So actually between these two clips, I'm just going to go ahead and select cross dissolve and drop it right in between these first two clips. And I'm just going to click right before that dissolve and use my space bar to play and pause. Okay, good. I like that dissolve, I'm going to go ahead and double click this and make this just a little bit longer. I'm going to say three seconds. I'll apply. Okay, it says I don't have enough media to actually do that. I'm going to try two seconds. Okay, how about one and a half seconds? Okay. Well, in theory, you can change your duration of your transitions here. I'm going to go ahead and do the same for the rest of these clips. I selected them specifically because they will make nice transitions. I'm going to go ahead and test a couple of these now. All right, great. And one more right in between the sky and the cat. It's 
All right. So something else we have under transitions, which isn't always a transition, you can drop a fade to black in between two clips. But I'm going to go ahead and drop a fade to black on the beginning and on the end of my clip. And this is going to let me fade from black in the beginning. And it's going to let me fade to black in the end. All right. So those are some basic edits I usually make. Feel free to experiment with this entire transitions menu here. We can come up and explore some of these other options. So uh, mainly titles are very helpful. We have a bunch of presets for titles. We can hover over them. And in this right window here, we get a preview of what each title will look like. So we have some cinematic ones that slowly expand. Uh, a lot of options here. Okay, I kind of like gravity. I'm going to go ahead and choose this. And I'm just going to click it and drag it down above my first clip here, right at the beginning. So I'm also going to zoom in in my timeline so I can see that a little better. I'm going to just hover over the end right here and click and drag, and I can extend this out to be longer. And if I select my title tag here, I can now come over into my preview window and type. I can select. And just like any word processor, I have font choices. I have justify, left, right, bold, italic, a bunch of options here, as well as color. So I'm going to go ahead and say I movie demo by Jonathan Baker. OK. So I want to go ahead and see what this is going to look like. All right, it's going to go ahead and auto fade in and out. So we don't need to worry about that. I'm going to go ahead and change this text just a little bit. All right, great. That looks pretty good to me. I'm going to come back here. I'm going to zoom back out. And we can explore some of these other tabs up here. So we explored titles, transitions, and my media. I'm going to come over here to audio. And this is where if we wanted to import only audio, you can do so from your iTunes or just from your computer in general. Uh, we don't have anything in here right now. We're going to use a different video clip for uh, extra audio. So I'm going to come over here to backgrounds, which we haven't looked at yet. Here we have some generic map backgrounds, which are pretty specific and don't come in handy unless you're really doing this specific sort of work where you need a globe or a map of the world. Uh, but they are here. So if you were doing green screen work and wanted uh, a globe or a world map, here you go. So I'm going to come back to my media here. And now we can explore, we have some options up in the upper right hand corner above our preview window. So I'm going to come over here to this clip, this landscape, and explore some of these color, crop, and other options we have. So right above our preview window, down below we have uh, controls for play, uh, last, and next. Uh, we can also full screen preview if we so choose. But you want to make sure you have the clip selected, so I have my clip selected. And I'm just going to go ahead and click this first circle with a line through it. And this is sort of an auto color option. We uh, have literally auto for color. So it'll try and do its best that way. I can try and match color with a different video clip. Uh, I can select white balance as also an auto feature or skin tone balance. I'm going to go ahead and select off of auto. I'm going to move next to this palette icon. And here we have contrast uh, or some more fine-tuned color and contrast options. So first I'm going to tackle this big long slider here. We have a lot of buttons. The last button or first button, depending on which way you look at it, we'll call it the first button since it's on the left. But it's a darker circle here. If I grab this and slide this to the left, this is my shadows. So I'm bringing the darkest parts of my image down and losing shadow detail while increasing contrast. If I bring this up, my shadows get 
brighter. I'm gaining shadow detail, but it looks a little weird all washed out, so I'm gonna drop it right back down to where it was. Uh, on the opposite end, we have the fully white circle. If I drag that to the right, it's gonna drag the highlights or the brightest parts of the picture to be brighter. And if I drag that to the left, it's gonna drag the highlights or the brightest part of the picture uh, to be darker. And drag that back to where it was. The middle button here is just general exposure. It's gonna make the entire picture either brighter or darker, and not just the uh, brights and darks, such as the highlights and the shadows button. These two buttons here are the contrast options. Uh, if you just click one, it will automatically grab the other. So if I bring them in towards the center, I have less contrast, and if I bring them out towards the ends, I have way more contrast. Over to the right, we have a saturation slider. So if I drag this all the way to the left, I have a black and white video. If I take this all the way to the right, I have a very oversaturated, crazy looking video. Uh, and next to that, we have a temperature slider. So I ha can make this cooler if it was too warm, or I can make this warmer if it was too cool. Uh, next, we have our crop option is this third icon. So I have a few options here. I have fit crop to fill, and kin burns. I also have a few options for rotate. I can rotate my video if I want. So I can say crop to fill, and I can bring these arrows in if I wanted to zoom in on a certain part and click that little check mark, and now I have a cropped video. I'm gonna go ahead and click reset. Ken burns, I can crop, and like the famous documentarian, I'm going to go ahead and check, check that uh, check mark. It's going to zoom and pan in on the video or photo, whatever you choose to import. So I'm going to come back up to crop and just reset all of that. Next, we have this camera with some shaky icons. So I have options for stabilizing shaky video or fixing a rolling shutter. These options work moderately well in my experience. So if you have shaky video where you are holding your camera uh, not steady, not on a tripod, you can go ahead and click this and then choose how much you want it to stabilize. It defaults to 33%, but you can raise that up or down. Next, uh, I have a, I guess a generic music or speaker icon, and I have some auto options for audio as well. So the next clip is some more fine-tuned options. I have reduce background noise. If you're recording and there's noise of a computer or an air conditioning unit or a, a refrigerator or a fan, you can try and, or wind, you can try and get rid of that here by clicking reduce background noise. And then again, choosing how much you want it to do that. It, next to that, we have an equalizer. So I can go ahead and click on that. And here we have a bunch of audio options as well. Flat, just meaning normal. And we have voice enhance, music enhance, loudness, hum reduction, bass boost, bass reduce, treble boost, and treble reduce. Uh, so those are some fun options or fun easy options if you wanted to try and enhance dialogue or music or bass. Next we have the speedometer. And here we have some speed options. I can speed up a clip or make it go slower if you wanted slow-mo or uh, faster. And I have options for how fast and for how slow. I can also freeze frame and come back up to normal. I can also reverse the clip. So if I click reverse, uh, it will go backwards. It's hard to tell on this clip since the camera doesn't move, but that will reverse your clip. Also, when you speed up or slow down a video clip, the audio naturally gets higher or lower. And so if you want to try and negate that, if you speed up or slow down a clip, you can go ahead and click preserve pitch and it will do its best to try and preserve the natural pitch of the voice or whatever audio you have instead of making it higher or lower. And click these three circles here. And we have a bunch of color options, almost Instagram filters here for black and white to noir, sepia, aged film. And you notice we get a little preview over in our right-handed window if I scroll over. It's going to try and make that look like old old film. A bunch of different color options if you didn't want to adjust your color yourself and find that one of these might help you a little better. I'm going to go ahead and click cancel. Uh, same with audio effect. We have uh, more audio options here. You can try effects that make voices sound like a robot or over the telephone or in a big room or small room, pitched up, pitched down. Some fun options there. And 
the little I is just the information for your piece. So it'll tell you uh, sort of when it was taken and the duration of it as well. We have one more option, like I mentioned, we can take a clip and drag it and drop it over other clips. So I'm gonna drag this clip over here. And you notice, I'm, going to, I'm actually gonna delete it just to prove a point. You notice here in this circle with a line through it, this is the first button we get here besides this wand here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag this down above those clips and now we have a different option. When we have this clip selected, we have an option here of two squares, one with dots and one solid. And we have some options for overlay here. So we can choose cutaway, which basically just means it uh, will be how it is, how, if I can just hover over this really quick, it will just cut to that video since that video is on the top layer whenever that comes into play. I'm gonna come back. We can say green screen, blue screen. And so this will try and take out any green or blue parts of an image and replace it with other footage. Not very well illustrated here, but if you have green screen or blue screen footage, this option does actually work pretty well. I'm going to come back to this clip and back to my options here. I also have split screen. I can make this into a split screen video if I want. I can also say picture in picture and have two videos or a photo in a video or a photo in a photo here as well. I can also choose how it comes in and out of the picture. If I want it to zoom, dissolve, or swap, I can go ahead and play dissolve and click here and use my space bar. It's going to dissolve in. I'm going to go ahead and come back to my options and choose uh, zoom uh, and use my check mark. It's going to zoom in. I'm actually not sure I did, did that uh, first step right, so I'm going to try and do this dissolve again. Yeah, there we go. You can also choose the duration of that uh, action, however that wants to come in or out of the picture. Just make sure to always use a check mark when you're done. Okay, so I'm actually going to get rid of this. And I'm actually going to zoom out. And you notice, I'm actually going to zoom in. Uh, you notice each of these clips does have an audio track down here below. This is this blue section. For these audio tracks, we have a white line in the middle. And I can click and grab that and drag that lower or higher. And that is an easy way to increase or decrease the volume of a clip if it needs to do that. But I actually don't want the audio from these clips. They're a little banal, and I actually want to put some music in the background. So I'm going to go ahead and select one, my first one here. And I'm just going to make sure it's selected. And then I'm going to right click it. And then I'm going to say detach audio. So that, you notice, drops a green bar below. And now, instead of the clip and the audio moving in unison, I can grab the audio and move that wherever I want. I can move it under a different clip. Or actually what I'm going to do here is just use my backspace key or delete key and delete it. So I'm going to do this for each one of these clips. All right. That looks good. So this is actually the video with the audio that I want. So I'm going to go ahead and drag that down into my project. And I don't want the video. So again, I'm going to select it. I'm going to right click it and use detach audio. And now I can grab this audio and I can drag it over the rest of this clip. And now I can come here and use the space bar or play button. And now we have an audio preview of our project. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, I can zoom back in here. I have this little white line and I can make that louder or quieter. So zero would be mute and 400% would be the loudest you could make something louder. So I'm gonna just go ahead and take that back down to 100 and zoom out here. So we put a cross dissolve between our clips. We put a fade to black on the beginning and the end. We added a title. You could also add a title at the end. They even have a preset if you wanted to do a list of people, such as a film. 
and you could go ahead and drop that right at the end if you wanted to. So I am going to go ahead and delete those two clips since we're not using them anymore. Move our fade to black there. Okay, so this is looking pretty good so far. So I'm gonna come back up to my media and I'm basically ready to export my video. It's a little long, it could actually use a little bit of trimming, but for the sake of brevity here, I'm gonna go ahead and call this a done video. And so whenever you're done, you have everything ordered and transitioned, you have your audio, uh, how you like it, you can come up to the upper right hand corner here and click share. And so this gives you a few options. You can put it into your theater, which is the iMovie theater. Uh, you can email it, send it to iTunes. If you are logged in with your YouTube, Facebook, or Vimeo account, you can also upload it directly to YouTube, Facebook, or Vimeo. You can export only an image. And you can also, uh, this is the last option, and the option that I highly recommend is file. And file will simply put the file out onto your computer and then you can do whatever you want with it. You can upload it to YouTube, you can email it to people, you can put it into your iTunes or on Facebook, uh, but you just have it and it's going to be the highest quality. The rest of these options are going to downsample your video considerably to fit it onto uh, platforms like email or Facebook. So I'm just going to go ahead and click file. And we have a few options here. So first, first off, I can name it. Uh, I certainly don't want it to be named My Movie 3. I'll never find it. So I'm going to come in here and use Backspace. And I'm going to use a personal naming convention. So I'm going to say last name, first name, what it is. So it's iMovie Tutorial. And when it was. So I'm going to say 2018. You can add a description if you want. This really only pops up if you keep it within your iMovie theater, but I'm just going to go ahead and say iMovie tutorial. You can also tag it again for use for searching your theater if you're going to keep everything there. Format and, oh yeah, format defaults to video and audio. This is what you want 99% of the time, unless for some reason you were uh, editing a podcast or something within iMovie and only ended up wanting the audio. You could just go ahead and select that there. And we have resolution. So I was working with 720p uh, footage, so it's giving me an option for 720p here, and it's actually defaulting to the highest resolution or the, re the resolution that it, the clip was originally. If you are working with 1080p or 4K video, iMovie does support those resolutions, and you will have those options if you choose to export that video there. Under quality, we have low, medium, high, and best. If you notice over here, we have a estimated file size. So right now under high, it's estimating that this three minute video will be about 280 megabytes. Not bad. And I'm going to take that from high to best. 1.38 gigabytes. Now best is certainly the best quality. And instead of a lossy or more lossy H.264 Kodak, it's going to use a ProRes Kodak but it does exponentially make your files bigger. And if you're working with anything over five or 10 minutes, you know, be ready to see these huge five, 10 gigabyte file sizes from this option. So I really don't recommend ever going with low or medium unless it was only ever going to be viewed on say a phone screen or something like that. I really recommend just coming in and selecting high. You can also come to custom if you want, and if you know what you want, you can insert uh, megabytes per second option and compression options here as well. I'm just going to come back up and select high. Under compress, uh, I'm going to, instead of faster, I'm going to choose better quality because I have more time on my hands and I want a better uh, final product here. So once that's done, I'm just going to go ahead and click next. I also have the option to add it to my theater here and also a duration. I can also hover and preview if I want. So I'm just going to go ahead and click Next. And now it's going to ask me where to save. So I'm going to come back up to my desktop, back into the folder that I made earlier, and into my deliverable folder, or also known as a you know, final product folder, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to go ahead and click Save. 
And so now it's exporting. You notice now we have a circle in the upper right hand corner. And this will be a preview bar of how far the project is in terms of exporting. When this is done, you can simply come to wherever you told that file to save. And I'm going to come back up into my folder here and into deliverable. You notice it's writing a few files right now, so they're not actually functioning. But it should just take about a minute or two, and this circle will get fully white, and then we'll have our end video clip. All right, it looks like our export was successful. So I can choose close or show. I'm going to choose show. It's going to bring me right to the uh, folder that it exported to. I'm just going to go ahead and double click this and make sure it works. I'm actually going to come back and look at the title. All right, great. I'll include this final video uh, at the end of this clip. And thank you so much for watching this web tutorial of iMovie 10.1.8.